Today I would like to have a play with some old UPS, that is, uninterruptible power supplies. What these are, for those of you who don't know what they are, uh, plugs into mains. In here is a battery and an inverter. When it loses mains power, uh, it switches over to the inverter and provides you with 240 volts on the output. They come in all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes with various size batteries and various uh, power, not requirements, but uh, outputs. So what's this one? Uh, this one's uh, 400 uh, volt amps. So depending on whether your load is purely resistors, resistive or capacitive, depends on the actual power output of the inverters. So if you're running a purely resistive heater, say you would get 400 watts worth of power, but you'll have to do maths to work out what the actual, uh, the volt amps of your equipment is, and this is dependent on the power factor. I'm sure somebody in the comments will leave a comment to tell us how to work out exactly. So this is my smaller one that doesn't work. This is a Belkin and it doesn't work already. The battery's knackered in it. Let me just set it down over here. It's fucking heavy. Oh. This one that you see on the bench uh, before you uh, is a, a Trust, Trust brand. And it's dead. It's got bigger, bigger batteries. Actually, it might be the same size battery, but there's two of them in parallel. These are absolutely fucked. They will hold their uh, 12 volts, but as soon as you apply a load, they fall in the, flat in the face, absolutely dead. So what I have done here is, I have taken the power supply, opened it up, your power supply may be different on how it opens, but eventually you'll find out that there is just a positive and a negative that goes on the battery. Mine just went on to spade terminals here on the battery. I have chopped them off and I have attached them to, right, can you see it under the meter here? Yes, a old car battery that I had lying on the floor of the workshop. This is a good battery, it charges up. I did a load test on it with the, you know, the battery tester testers and it's, it holds its volts. So what I want to do now is I need to make up a wire for this because like the other ones, they don't come with a wire that, oh, it's not, they're not really useful. So you get the three pin kettle lead. What they all seem to come with is these, which is a kettle lead that plugs into it one end and then another female kettle lead so you can plug your appliances into it. But that's no good if you want to plug in something else, which is what I want to do. So what we're going to do is cut one of these ends off and I'm going to put a plug in on the end of it so I can plug something into it and actually load test it. So I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay, I've successfully attached the plug thing to the bit of wire. Do make sure you cut the right end off and not the wrong end, because yeah, not that, of course, I would have ever done anything like that. Right, so we've got a normal three pin UK plug now. We have our trusty old power meter here. Right, let's turn it on. Prepare for beeping. So, at the moment, I uh, don't know if you can, you probably can't see on there upside down or round about. On that display, there is 0.9 of an amp uh, charging the battery at the moment. 0.9 of an amp. The battery voltage that you can't see because it's ever so slightly off screen. Ever so slightly. Let me just do that. There we go. It's currently at 12.9 volts. Note on the battery, this is just a normal car battery, not a leisure cell. Should it be a leisure cell? Absolutely, as this is a long, low draw, as opposed to a short, fast draw, which is what car batteries are for. 
Leisure cells are for long, low draws and being charged back up again. But this car battery was lying on the floor and it was free. I did not have to buy it. So that's what we're using. And well, what we want to see is if it works or not. In theory, it should work. Here I have my trusty lamp that as soon as I plug it in, is going to blow out all the cameras. So we'll turn it round, hopefully. Let's see if how this looks. Okay, that's not terrible. Right. So, at the moment, with the lamp plugged in, and the mains power still feeding this, uh, the what you get on here is the actual mains voltage of the wall, which at the moment is 245 volts. And that is pulling just over well, 370 milliamps, or 57 watts at a lovely 49.9 .9 or 50 hertz, almost spot on here we have. And that has a power factor of 0.64. Well, let us now switch off the mains power and see what happens to the output. Oh, mains power's gone off. The output of the inverters, 236 volts. It's gone up to 400 milliamps because the voltage has gone down, obviously. 62 watts, uh, 50 hertz, and the power factor's uh, 0.63 now. I've done some maths with the lamp using the clamp meter, and we'll just call it 12 volts for the sake of uh, 12 volts. So the lamp has a power factor of 0.6, so that gives it 53 watts, and because it's an inductive load mostly, uh, we get a, a volt amp of 85. So the seven and a half amps that it draws times the 12 volts is approximately 90 watts, which is give or take, uh, you know, what you get. You would expect some losses across the transformer and all the circuitry. So that's pretty much what I would expect for that. And that was a capacitive load. So this is now Remove the lamp and plug in a mostly purely resistive load. It's a little electric heater. You may have seen this before on uh, BigLive.com's channel. They are horrendously dangerous. Please don't buy them. Uh, but yeah, it is a resistive, not a purely resistive load. As shown by the power factor of 0.99. 500 watts, 500 VA, so it's a 500, 500, pretty much perfect. Right, clamp meters ready to go, we'll watch the battery voltage, let's turn the mains power off. Clack, that's 50, 53, 54 amps, that's pulling, 54, 54 amps, uh, 12 volts, even I can do those sums. Uh, what's the voltage drop do? So the voltage has dropped down to 227 volts. Kind of not really unexpected. I'm impressed with the battery though. The battery's holding a 11.3 with a 500 watt load on it. Okay, hush. Stop your incessant beeping. And as soon as you turn off, no. As soon as you reapply AC power, it starts charging the battery again with uh, one amp of charging current. So it's now back up to 12, and I'll keep going up to uh, hopefully 14 volts will be its thing. Let me just uh, do this mathematics, cause I can't do it without a calculator, cause I'm not smart. Uh, 54 times 12, 648 watts, 648, 648. 6, 4, 8, which, well, I'd say that was 500, so 100 watts lost in conversion. Class B transformer, I don't know what uh, Class B translates to in actual efficiency, but I imagine there is some losses throughout the transformer and the circuitry. Now, why have we, why have, why have we, why have I, why, why have I brought you along in this horrible journey? Uh, well, this is going to be, hopefully at some point, I'm gonna 
either steal all the circuitry and bits out of this and put them in something else, like a box, perhaps a toolbox with a battery in it. You can turn off now, thanks Mir. Yes, you've served your purposeless, purposeful and listlessness. Put all this in a box and then have it with the mains power to uh, mains to 12 volt power supply, you know the one we run the diesel heater on, and this will hopefully demonstrate a way, let's say if you're running a off-grid somewhere where you have a tendency to have power cuts, and well, you can have as many leisure cells on your UPS as you want, I suppose, there's no what you will only be limited to the but to limited to then is the time it'll take to charge those batteries. But then again, there's absolutely nothing to stop you adding another battery charger to charge the bank and just have this as literally the switch over to uh, providing the power. Obviously, you can still only get as much wattage out of this unit as it's supposed to deliver. Like, I think this one is a one kilowatt, so you can only get one kilowatt of it. You can't, no matter how many batteries you add, you still can't get more than a kilowatt out of its electronics without it melting and probably setting itself on fire. But I digress. As I say, I'd like to build all this up and have it connected to one of the power supplies, the diesel heater, and then kill the power, and then have, we'll have the other, uh, either the afterburner or the voltage sensing relay to turn the fuel pump off to shut the heater down, etc, etc. But I just wanted to see if I could turn this dead, uh, uninterruptible power supply into something useful. And it appears, yeah, you can just rip out the old batteries and either find a leisure cell or old car batteries, hey, old car batteries work. And it's, if they're free, if they're free, they're free, you know, don't spend money. That's, that was my kind of goal. God, I'm waffling now. But, well, this works. It's horrendous. I need to stay it up and put it in a box. But it does work. It is a thing. I can make it, make it work better. Um, thanks for watching.